Hello! Welcome to my ray tracer. This is the same ray tracer I used in a previous video that uh, was just to do some strange things that were non-Euclidean. I'm still doing some non-Euclidean things, but this time the ray tracer is much more advanced. Everything is still made out of these unusual blocks, and uh, it's still done on this regular grid. The regular grid makes things a lot simpler. The space can be warped in X, Y, or Z, or some combination, but uh, we'll just take it as it goes. I actually turned this kind of into a video game. I'm calling uh, the engine No Euclid, and the video game is probably going to be Get to the Blue Block. Because the whole goal of the game is to always get to the blue block. We'll do that right now. So in this room down here, you can see that the room is actually somewhat breathing. That is because the density of the walls can change. And because everything is uh, rendered with the procedural texturing, it depends on the 3D location of where the wall point actually is. So, as you can see, as the walls retract, we're kind of seeing slices through this rock texture. The textures are mimicking Minecraft textures because I originally wrote the Ray Tracer to work with Minecraft. Never really did very much with that, but, you know, whatever. There's also some goodies. So, for these, there's some blocks that are uh, made out of stars. And, uh, really what it is, is just anywhere that that block appears, uh, render stars. Let's restart this room. So, let's see here. Go through the hole. And I can also do some unusual things where I would go mess with the way in which the room is rendered. So here, I just went through the wall, and you can see that the entrance disappeared. However, their exit did appear. So, unlike before, I now have the ability to warp. And uh, I can actually control rotation in warping, but uh, for this demonstration right here, I'm just warping position. So as you can see, I the bottom of this block is also tied to the top of this box. So we're actually falling continuously through this solid block. And because the physics uses the same... Actually, wow, we're going really quick. The physics is using the same, uh, same calculations as the graphics, we end up being able to do some pretty neat things and having wherever you walk or wherever you are falling is where you visually would go. So we're actually doing all of that on the GPU, physics included, unlike before. So here, I have a room filled with lava. And if you touch the lava, you die. And you restart the room. And here's an example of something you really just can't do with conventional rendering. So I'm both using the, the, the same sort of blocks for the sky, but if you look at this side of the room, it looks very different than this side of the room. On this side of the room, we can't quite clear lava. No matter how hard we try, and no matter how hard we jump, there is no way for us to clear it. But, as we start walking more towards this side of the room, you see that the entire environment warps. You can even see kind of the environment warping upwards as we get to this side of the room. And that's because the X and Y is actually smaller here. So, the blocks over here are smaller than the blocks over there. Over here, it's trivial to skip from one block to the next. Whereas over there, it's virtually impossible. You can also kind of see more of the extreme warping effect over here. Let's get to the exit. As always, the goal is get to the blue block. When we hit the exit, we're going to go look at another room where things are warped. Each room has a time limit. This one has a particularly short time limit. That's because you should not be able to get to the blue block by falling down in the hole and trying to go to the blue block. And that may seem strange, but it's because sometimes the fastest point, fastest path between two points, is not a straight line. Sometimes it's go sideways and then go to the blue block. As you can see here, blue block is far away. Oh, restart. Oops. But over here, space is very compressed, so we can just walk straight to the blue block. You can also see kind of this warping effect that would just be impossible with traditional uh, polygon rendering. And the blue block here. And sometimes, like here, you just can't get across. There's just no way to get to that blue block. Sometimes the fastest and only path is not a straight line. Sometimes you have to go the wrong way to get to the exit. 
One of the other constructs I've added in this game is the ability to pick up certain blocks. So here I'm picking up all of these gold bo ore blocks in order to put them in my inventory so that I can get to the exit, which is over there. I can jump, but there's no way for me to get there on my own. I can, however, put up some walls here, and I can use the blocks that I've placed to my advantage. So I can go up here, up here, and now I can go over here. Of course, if I want, I could just go jump right back, but, you know, what fun is that? This kind of also shows off that we can make gravity appear to go the wrong way by flipping space upside down when we warp. So I'm going to go place a little path right here to get across. Okay. And one of the other neat things I can do is reuse rooms. So here, oh, I can also suck blocks through portals because the same mechanism that is used for sucking blocks is the same one that we visually render with. So if you can see something, you can affect it in the same way that it's visually there. So for example, in this room, we can go and we can build a little path up because, sure enough, that's not a blue block anymore, that's a white block. White block means it doesn't really do anything. I can go over here and say I want to get above the clouds. I can just go place some of these golden blocks. And I can just keep doing this until I get much closer to the ceiling. You're going to see the extreme and the warping effect here. Let's see, probably two more. Woo! There we go. Now we can make our way across over to the blue blocks. I can just place these here, and you can see how it actually renders around it. It tries to render the densities all correctly. And this is all ray tracing, except for, you know, the text on the screen. But for the most part, I mean, anything that you see that's a visual, like, element is being ray traced. And this is uh, another room where I'm tweaking things continuously to get across. And like always, if you fall into lava, you die. So here we're going to... Give it a moment to kind of get a path going. Oh, whoops, I messed that up. Oh, no. Let's see here. Got to Oh. Let's see. Got to get to that uh, blue block. Whoa. Okay. This is actually the end of what I've written, and you can see right here that I have an entire world that I can fill in with new puzzles. And all I'm right now using is just this small area over here. One of the neat things about these puzzles that I'm doing is I'm using TCC. So I can actually manipulate the puzzle in, you know, while I'm playing the game. So if I jump back to room, say, 0, right here, I can modify the code that controls this room in real time. So right here I have the code, and I can go room 0. And if I look in here, I can see all of the code that's being executed to generate this room. I can go and modify it very easily. Say I want to make that uh, block number 80 instead of 83. Somewhere here, it should be 80. Maybe I'm getting a little confused. Nope, oh, up there. So that's the block up there. Let's see if we can get that in view. It's being a little slow, but we got it. Okay. I can change the number for the block, and it recompiles the code in real time. And uh, I'm able to go change it, changes the code, updates it, and it keeps all of the environment variables the same. So I can actually go change the code on the fly and be able to play the game to be able to tweak it. Uh, this makes it really easy to do rapid prototyping development with this, so that I can go play around with a bunch of things really quick and be able to see what I like. Um, I hope you guys like it. All of this is available on GitHub right now, and um, I don't know if I'm going to keep making the games, because I really want to go back to making hardware videos, um, but this is just something I've been working on, something I think is pretty cool, and uh, who knows, maybe somebody will take this and make a real video game with it. Um, give me some comments if you liked it, just tell me, and uh, hopefully videos on hardware will return in the next day or so. Thanks!